Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do an updated character guide on Lon and Rain. Actually, I don't know that I put any character guide out on them yet, so this might be my first one, but they did just get an FR and a rework, and then they already had their BT, uh, but now they got an upgrade to that as well. So uh, they're looking pretty good, uh, but if you're not familiar with Lon and Rain, they are basically an AoE specialist. So like you only want to use them in AoE fights. So a minimum of two target fights, preferably three target fights. And they do carry like four or five different elements. They carry a ton of elements, right? So there's two really bad parts to Lawn and Rain that I don't like. One is is you can't use them in single target fights. Um, and they're, they're, they're still pretty good in two target fights. But you really, like I would only break them out for three target fights, honestly. And there aren't a ton of three target fights in the game. So they're just very specialized. And then the other thing is being that they carry so many elements, if there's elemental lockout, like they get locked out super easy because they have so many different elements, right? But they do deal a lot of damage in three target fights. They are very good there. So if you like that, you might want to pick them up, but I, I don't recommend it just because they're very limited on where they're like at their best, right? So in this video, let's look at their calls, their artifacts, and their spheres. Um, so their calls, I don't really think are too notable. Um, the one thing with Thunder and Geocrush, it is an instant break. So there is some use to that if you just need an on the spot instant break. Um, and then the LD call Mega Flare, it is going to do a lot of damage, right? Like a lot of AoE damage. Um, and it does increase uh, the caller's overflow stolen up and elemental weakness damage up. And it does scale. It, they're be the, the buffs are better based on the number of enemies, right? Um, but once again, nothing too crazy. I don't really see myself using their calls that often, right? Um, so let's look at the characters here. Uh, their artifacts dude i have not grinded their artifacts and their current event does not have a way to grind their artifacts so i'm going to guess in the next event um which is i think core uh, i'm guessing in that co-op we'll have the ab ab ability to do that so i definitely got to grind them up you can see i just don't have artifacts for them but what you want is attack 108 and then mirage keeper boost two star uh, mirage keeper boost is going to give them five percent of every stat which you definitely want right um and they are a damage dealer so you really want to focus on like attack brave damage magic attack stuff like that with them uh so let's go ahead and look at the spheres um very basic right like on the attack slots you want attack or brave damage or magic attack i decided to use up some magic attack spheres so i've got cloud of darkness uh Aerith is a very good magic attack up sphere you could do you could do just generic attack ones you could do like uh jack or cisne um, stuff like that. Or not Cisne, uh, Shelk, I should say. Um, Shelk could be a good one. Sephiroth, Attack, Max, Brave. Some combo like that. Uh, Rydia works because they have weakness damage. You can get Attack, Brave damage there. So they do have a lot of A-spheres that do work well on them. And then on the D-slot, you just want one of the party attack ones. There's a ton of them. Ash, Saz, Lise, Hope, Lunafreya, uh, Cisne. That's where I was thinking of Cisne, right? Like those are all ones you could use. I did Lunafreya because it is a weakness damage trigger and that's one that they can hit, right? Uh, so with that... <clears throat> we'll go ahead and hop in. So my twins here, uh, they have the whole kit built, except they don't have BT. <laughs> I told this story earlier. I have pulled their BT in the past, but I just was not interested in the character. I needed BT tokens. I did sell it. I don't recommend you guys ever sell a BT that you, it isn't a dupe. Um, but I did back in the day, and I'm kind of regretting it because it would be nice to have right now because their BT auras are actually really good in a three-target fight, which is what you want them for, right? So let's go ahead and hop in. Um, I'm going to just bring them with Pinello and Aerith just to like make them look really good, right? I think Squall is like a nice complementary partner to them. Like, because the Lawn and Rain, like you kind of want to think of them almost in more of a support role because their, <clears throat> their auras for AoE fights are so good. Like on the BT um, auras and then like the, you know, just the other auras they're getting in their kit are so good in a three target fight. Like they make a character like Squall look insane. Um, so Squall would be really good. Now, I'm doing the uh, Divine Bahamut, and I don't want him to die too fast. So I'm not going to bring Squall here because I want to focus on the twins and see their damage. So that's why I'm bringing like Pinello and Aerith just to make them look really good. So let's hop in. Um, I don't really think I need a friend unit here if it's going to even ask me for one. My game is wanting to go really slow. Um, let me just see here. I just want to check. I, I doubt there will be one, but I'm like, ah, did somebody set the twins as their friend that I could show off their BT? No, they did not. Okay. So sure, we'll just have a selfie just to have one. Sure. Um, and we'll just hop in like that. <clears throat> All right, but they're they're pretty basic, right? They're, there's not a lot of nuance to their kit. You press buttons, you do damage. <laughs> it's pretty much how they're going to work. Um, and so I'm just going to go through their kit and kind of explain everything that we're looking at um, so that you guys understand how they work. But once again, a lot of elements coming through here, right? 
All right, and I like this fight for showcasing just because they're always going to have ads. or always going to have the three targets, right? Um, so let's go ahead. And here's the thing. In this fight, we could start off with FR. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Raijin on just to make sure they're not messing with us too bad. Perfect. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to start doing some attacks. So let's go ahead and do Thunder and Geo Crush Plus. Um, now, basically, they have two buffs. There's a Mirage S and a Mirage L. And you want to have those both up because that's going to give them the plus versions of their skills. And you always want to have that. Um, so just make sure you upkeep those. Now, they have them at start. And then by doing the 15 and 35, you're going to keep upkeeping those. Now, Thunder and Geo Crush is going to be a free instant break. So let's go ahead and press that. And everything they do is going to be AoE, right? They're AoE specialist. So let's see what kind of damage you got there. All right, so like 800k AoE across the board. Not too bad considering it's an instant break and we don't have like any BT auras up yet. But it does break all the enemies. It does have high turn rate, so you can skip turns with it. It is an earth and lightning attack. Um, and then it does give them four stacks of the Mirage S or four turns of the Mirage S. So Mirage S is a speed up, brave damage, resist up. Um, and then if you also have the Mirage L up, it does attack, max brave, eye brave, and defense. So the other reason you want both of those buffs up is they get more buffs if you have the other one up, right? Um, so with Aerith here, what I think I'm going to do with Aerith is I think I'm just going to get BT effect up like immediately. Uh, I kind of want to do seal evil, but let's just get the BT effect up. This should be a pretty quick showcase. So we'll try to see like the base damage on all the skills. And then we'll just go into a force time, do some crazy ramp, and probably one-shot this boss. Because this is just a Lufenia Plus, right? <clears throat> we'll see, though. Yep, and those ads will just keep healing, which is what I like. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get some good buffs on here with Pinello. And then we'll get Pinello's BT effect up. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and get the BT effect up there. <clears throat> And then we'll obviously talk about their BT effect. The thing with their BT, it's mainly just auras. So I can just safely explain that to you so that you understand what it is. So not seeing their BT isn't like the end of the world, right? All right. So we'll go ahead and get to another twins turn here. And the nice thing with having Aerith is because this boss actually can still like kill you. So like, <clears throat> so this is where Raijin comes into play, right? <laughs> but then we do have Aerith as a backup. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do Blizzard and Water Plus. Once again, another AoE attack. Let's see the damage here. All right, yeah, about a mil AoE, right? And so the reason why it's so good, you might say, well, other characters do well over a mil, but the problem is, is that, or the thing is with On and Rain, they're doing it across the entire field. So they actually did like three mil on that one attack, which is a lot of damage for a singular attack. And that's just a 35 button press, right? So this attack was an ice and water attack. Um, and then it gives them the Mirage L buff and it does a speed down on the enemy. The Mirage L... Oh, and the other thing I should mention is... Um, it only like so you only get the mirage s and the mirage l if it's the base skill if it's not the plus one so if it's the plus one it won't upkeep it but you only do that if it's the base one so if you ever don't see the plus and you press it you'll get that upkept again um but the mirage l is just an attack max brave and defense up so nothing too crazy but you do want to have it up because it helps give them the plus versions and it's going to make the mirage s look better uh if you have the l up right and you want them both up to get the the good skills okay so with Aerith here, uh, yeah, let's do Seal Evil. <clears throat> and then we're going to do the LD at that point. All right, so they have a countdown, but it's not a big deal. Not a big deal, because we'll just blast them like through their countdown pretty easily. Let's go ahead and do Evanescence here. I'm trying to remember, this boss had like a weird countdown mechanic where like you have to cancel it. I don't even remember what the requirement was, but we can just beat through it. I think if we get to 79%, it goes away. All right, well, they're only dealing once to us, so that's pretty good. All right, so back to Lon and Rain. Let's go ahead, and we need to hit up the uh, LD. So let's do the LD, which is called Mega Flare. Now, this will actually trigger twice. This is why it gets powerful. This is a pretty strong button press here. All right, so yeah, about two mil AOE, which is pretty good. 
once again, because we're doing that across the board, so we did six mil in a button press, which is crazy. Um, so you have to have two or more enemies and then it executes twice. So that's why like single target, like you just can't even bring Lon and Rain. They're so weak. So that's why I don't like them is because they're just locked out of so many fights, whether it be due to element or due to lack of enemies, right? Now they are going to get a free ability use on their next turn. Um, and then this is going to give them four turns of the Mirage S and the Mirage L. So that's the main way you want to upkeep it is through to LD. That way you're always just hitting the plus skills on the 15 and 35. And then they get a buff called Mega Mirage Summon for 10 turns. Mega Mirage Summon is going to be an attack, overflow, elemental weakness damage up, HP and Brave Damage stolen up, and it scales based on how many enemies there are. So the numbers are really good if there are three enemies. So you just want, and that it's typical with a lot of their buffs, especially their BT auras. It all scales on the number of enemies. Um, so now with Aerith, um, sure, we'll just do an HP attack. And I think we will start to go into like FR mode here pretty quick. All right, and Pinello, sure, we'll just Evanescence, that's fine. <clears throat> All right, Lon and Rain do have the EX, so we'll get the EX up normally, and then we'll go ahead and we'll go into FR. That should cancel their countdown. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and do the EX so we can see that. Um, and the other thing is you can use the AA, right? This will set their Mirage. So this will give them both the Mirage buffs if you need to. So you can also use the AA to get that. So once again, I wouldn't ever press the non-plus version to like up, upkeep it. You upkeep it with the AA or the LD for those Mirage L and S. Um, let's go to the EX here. This is Sonic Fangs. Okay, so one and a half mil AOE. So you're seeing we're getting anywhere from one to two mil AOE on all of the attacks. Um, and this is with an Ultima weapon, so I am trying to make them look good. I just don't have like the BT stuff going, right? So this uh, this also breaks all the enemies. So between Thunder and Geo Crush and Sonic Fangs, you got two instant break attacks, which is good. And then this one does fire damage. So between all of the attacks, they've got all five elements, right? Um, and then this does stack enchant buff, and then it does also upkeep the Mirage S and the Mirage L. So another way you can upkeep those, right? Um, and then it does stack resist down on the enemies. So what this is going to do is stack enchant is going to it's going to party enchant for all five elements. And then stack resist down is basically an omni imperil. It's going to imperil for all five. So you enchant imperil with the EX for all five elements, which is kind of crazy, right? Um, but once again, it doesn't matter. If enemies absorb an element, the enchant won't matter. Uh, and then let's go ahead with Aerith. And sure, let's go ahead and seal evil. And then we'll hop into FR. Okay, so we'll let that go. And then we'll do an FR and a little bit of stacking and then uh, kind of see what the damage is looking like as we're going through. Sure, we'll have an essence here. We'll do the FR and then we'll talk about what the BT effect does and then that's it. But we'll let, yeah, they're pretty basic. Um, as long as you're hitting the EX when it comes up, like you're upkeeping the important buffs and you're just kind of pressing buttons and you do instant break when you want to do that and all that stuff, right? So yeah, let's go ahead and hit the, the FR, which is called Eternal Link. <clears throat> and of course, the two, uh, yeah, <laughs> the brother and sister combos. Yeah, that's a lot of characters on the screen right there. All right, so two mil AOE on that to start. So let's go ahead and talk about the FR. This is an instant turn, so you see that we get another turn back to back. Um, so the force time effect is the party HP damage and limit is up 50% for elemental weakness damage. And then it is going to party Omni Enchant for all those elements. And then the HP damage conditions, if you do AOE HP damage, 30%. And if you do elemental damage on turn, it's 20%. But you get another 20% if it's more than two elements. So this is where like the Omni Enchant comes into play. So if you're bringing party members that are doing AOE HP damage... Um, they're going to be getting the elemental damage for sure. So it's, what, 70%. It's one of those kind of very easy 70% uh, for the whole party, right? So now let's go ahead and echo. So this should be AoE, so we should get the full 70% here. Um, now mine are actually only Chris are Force Enhanced 10. So they might not actually get, like, full gains. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, we had 93%, which is good. It just, we don't charge as well and in, in, in stuff like that because we are only off Force Enhanced 10. All right, so we got that. And then, sure, let's go on Sonic Fangs. This should break. Oh, 
Oh, I, actually, this is an enemy that can't be broken, so it's a really bad part to showcase that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or no, they are already broken. We're good. Uh, let me see here. Yep, and we'll do we'll do the Aerith double ramp here. Sorry, it was just that they were already... So it doesn't unbreak, right? It just breaks them if they can be broken. Uh, let me see here. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay, so we'll get our gauge up high and then we can kind of see some damage. And actually, I could almost just go into like a summon phase. And then the enemies won't be able to mess with us. I might do that actually. Um, let's go ahead and Aerith. Sure, let's Fury Brand. We'll see if we can kill this little Bahamut Lufenia Plus in this video here. This is a nice fight to show off, like the three target, because once again, you always will have three targets. And they don't really mess with you too bad. And it's really easy to get around the orb because you can just cancel it really easy by doing enough damage. All right, let's go ahead and do a summon. <laughs> I mean, Bahamut's going to melt pretty quick here. I may almost have to like... Uh, sure, we'll Fatal Dance. Why not? We'll go crazy. But then maybe the Twins will finish on the next attack here. Yeah, that was a 10 mil shot. Yeah, Bahamut's going to melt. So let's go ahead and finish. And I think we'll finish with a Mega Flare. I think a Mega Flare is the good one to do here. Uh, let's go ahead and hit up that Mega Flare. Let's see some big damage. So, so this is a Mega Flare about almost 600%. See how much damage it does. Once again, we're doubling up on it. And this is without their BT effect, right? Okay, so we did, yeah, 14 mil AoE. Not bad. I mean, so what, that's like 45 million damage they did on that one attack. It's a lot when you consider the damage spread across all three, right? So now their BT effect is going to make them look even better. So their BT is called Blossom Storm. Um, and obviously that's going to do a big AoE attack. But the burst effect is Brave Damage up, HP Damage up, HP Damage Limit up, and Own HP Damage Limit up even further and then uh, overflow stolen up, right? And it's all based on enemy count. So if you have three enemies, they give 60% HP damage up and then HP damage limit up 30% and then they get another 30. So they're like 60% each. Like it's insane the amount of gains you get on that if you have three enemies, right? So once again, in a three target fight, they're going to be a really awesome unit to have. But the question is, is with elemental lockout and single target fights, how often are you going to use them, right? So anyways, let me know what you think of Lawn and Rain. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.